Hey everyone, uh, this video is going to be about uh, how to integrate Firebase and Xano and do a little authentication dance between the two. And just so you know, the reason I'm doing this is because Flutterflow has uh, a really nice integration with push notifications and social logins. So I'm just going to be using it for that, right? Um, and essentially what is going on is that we are logging in to Firebase and authenticating with Firebase. And we are gonna grab, Flutterflow is gonna send over the JWT token, which is an identity token. And we're gonna send that over to Xano and we're gonna exchange that for a Xano access token. So, this is what it, the action flow looks like when you log in. Um, we're logging into Firebase here. And then this is for an email and password. Uh, and then we are grabbing, uh, this is our Xano API call, which I call the Firebase auth. And we are grabbing from our authenticated user, which is built into Firebase, uh, into Flutterflow. Uh, we're grabbing this ID token jwt token okay so how that works is we're basically gonna send send it over as an input and it's it's pretty straightforward uh how, how you do all this uh let me go to the call here uh real quick sorry about that so essentially we're taking in this ID token, right? And then we're gonna need to basically de like get something out of this ID token. And what we're gonna be doing is you can test it in, in this, uh, through this website right here, jwt.io. All right, so what this does is it takes a token and it decodes it, right? So we've got our header, which is red, our payload, which is purple, and then our verify signature. So what we do is in, or, in order to like figure all this out, um, this purple payload part is gonna be telling us who the user is and whatnot. Okay, so that's, that's great. So in the beginning of my function stack, I'm, I'm getting this record from meta. And what is meta? So if we go to my tasks, I have this task running uh, every day. And what it is, is this thing called Google Kids. And if I go to this website right here, this is what I'm getting. It's this certificate from Google, okay? And so I'm going, I'm getting this every day. I'm pretty sure it expires like once a week, but I'm just getting it every day and I'm caching it. And, uh, so you can see like it just repeats every day. Um, and w I'm getting the response, the result, and I'm storing it in this, in this like uh, record one field. Um, and I'm storing it as my Google keys and it's the Google kids response. So what is that exactly? Uh, <clears throat> it's basically gonna be, uh, it's gonna contain what we need uh, to basically do this. Um, and I'm just storing it here as JSON, and there it is. That same thing you saw on the website, here it is, the certificate, boom. Um, and <clears throat> so we're grabbing that certificate, and then we're creating a variable called header. And you're gonna wanna like split the ID token, and then grab the first, uh, this is going to be a uh, first array, the first piece of the array and split it by uh, the separator, which is the period and then base decode 64 and then JSON decode. And the reason we're doing this is because then we're going to decode the actual token. Um, and we're getting the header dot kid uh, as the key. And then this signature, the signature algorithm is RS-256. And when you, like, when you plug in that JWT, 
like in, into this, it contains all that information. You'll see what's going on. And a quick way to do that is if you just bind it to an input text field within your app in test mode uh, or in run mode, uh, you can just select it uh, and copy and paste it in and you'll figure out what's going on and what I'm talking about. So once you do that, uh, essentially all I'm going to do is I'm going to, I created this field within my users table. So everybody's going to have this, uh, field called Firebase underscore ID, and that's where it's going to have their Firebase ID essentially. And this is called the user ID. Um, and it's located in that token. That's why we're getting it. Um, and so then I have a simple if conditional. Um, I'm checking basically if uh, the person that's logging in has a, a user record within our Xano table. Um, so if users one is null, if we can't find the person without Firebase ID, we're gonna create them a user in our Xano table. Um, and essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna record that, like it contains the email, um, stuff like that. And uh, then we are going to give them an a Xano auth token. Okay. And if you don't necessarily have to do it like this, but this is the way I'm doing it. Um, essentially it, I'm creating, creating an auth token twice. And the reason I'm doing this is because this one, I'm creating it based off of the user ID that we created in this ad record. And this one is if it's not null. If we do have that user, like the Firebase uh, ID for that user, uh, we're just gonna create the auth token for that specific user, okay? And <clears throat> that is pretty much how it works. Um, one other thing I will show is that uh, th these Xano tokens are going to expire, right? We, we saw it right here. Um, when we create this auth token, this is the expiration. And one thing that will happen is uh, you, we're going to be storing this in our app state, right? And we are storing this as a secure persisted field, okay? And sometimes a user is going to come back and log in and their auth token is going to be expired and they'll get 401s in the app. So how to avoid that situation? There's a couple different ways. Um, you can do it by uh, recording the time and doing calculations based off of your uh, when the Xano token is going to expire and do some logic on page load on every page load or your home page load and basically go and exchange the token if it's you know an hour within expiring or you could do what i'm doing here which is i'm creating a routing page and so instead of having my logged in as my home screen my logged in screen in my settings right here is my routing page so what this routing page does is on page load we're going to go and check if we're going to get a 401 or not, if our Xano token is expired. And <clears throat> basically, we're going to do our like a get user data call or whatever call you want, um, and then add a wait so this doesn't keep progressing. Wait is very important with on page load because it's not going to wait for the actual response. Um, so you need to add a wait. So we're adding a one second wait. And if our API output, if our status of that API output is equal to 200, which is an okay call, um, we are gonna navigate to home. Otherwise, we're gonna log them out and that's gonna take them to the login screen. All right, so I think that's everything. I'm going to have uh, all the additional information linked below and uh, let me know if that helps, uh, if uh, this was clear or not, or if anything needs uh, to be touched on. But yeah, essentially, it, it's pretty simple. 
Um, and I'm going to make another video on how to do the push notifications. Uh, so this one doesn't end up being too long and you can just focus on this for now. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you so much. And uh, I hope this helps someone out there. Let me know if you have any questions.